Radical equations are equations that involve the square root symbol, like this one. This is called the radical symbol. Actually, if you have a cube root or a fourth root, those are also radical equations. But you're going to approach them the same way we do this one. The idea is to isolate the variable, which is inside the radical symbol, or underneath it, we need to do the opposite operation. So if this operation is a square root, the opposite operation, the one that would undo it, is to square. So we will square both sides of the equation. Square root of x will square that, and the 4 on the right side will square that. Since the left side and the right side were the same as each other, then that's uh, the result of squaring them will also be the same. If we had a different radical, like a cube root, then instead of squaring both sides, we would cube both sides. But otherwise, the ideas are exactly the same. So squaring undoes the square root, leaving us just an x on the left side. And on the right side, 4 squared is 16. So this was a really short question, where that's already our final answer. Here's a, just a slightly more complicated one, but our approach is going to be the same. To start isolating the x, let's think about the operations that are being performed. If you plugged in a number for x, the first thing you would do here is add 3 to that number. And then you would take the square root. So we want to reverse those steps. We want to reverse the order as well. So if the last thing we did was to take the square root, the first thing we will undo is taking the square root. So the first thing we will do is square both sides. So I start with what's on the left side, and I square it. And with what's on the right side, I square it. On the left, we get x plus 3, because the square root and the squaring cancel. On the right we have 16. And then there's this time there's one more step to isolate x. We just subtract 3 from both sides. So x is 13. Here's another one just like that. First thing I want to do is square both sides. Squaring the square root undoes it, so we get 2x plus 3 equals 25. Subtract 3 from both sides to get 2x is 22. And then divide by 2 to get x is 11. Okay, last one. Um, now this one is very similar looking, but there is a subtle point here that we need to be careful about. Again, think about what would happen if you plugged in a number and tried to evaluate the left side. If you plugged in a number for x, the first thing you would do to x is multiply it by this 10. After you got that value, you'd subtract this 2. After you did that, you'd take the square root of the whole thing. And after you did that, you'd subtract 3. And if we're going to isolate x, we have to undo those in the reverse order. So that means the first thing we have to undo is subtracting the 3. We need to add 3 to both sides to begin with. Don't try squaring both sides right now. It will be a mess because you'd have to distribute. If you square both sides, this is not our solution. This is just an illustration of what happens if you try to square both sides first. Well, remember, squaring that is like multiplying it by itself. And to multiply these two binomial type expressions together, we have to distribute. This times this is 10x minus 2. But this times this is negative 3 times the square root of 10x minus 2, and so on. And you'll notice that taking this approach still leaves us with a square root symbol 
after we try to simplify it. So we definitely don't want to square both sides yet. We have to move that minus 3 out of the way before we attempt any squaring. So let's do that. And if we begin by adding 3 to both sides, now it looks like the previous problem. And so it's going to be fairly straightforward to get our answer. So this time I get x is 66 over 10. You could reduce that to 33 over 5. Or you could write it as a decimal, 6.6. .6. That's an exact value. There's no rounding there. So that's equal to x.